Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at net present value. Now, net present value or NPV is a tool that can help you determine if an investment or a project is worthwhile to undertake. So is this a good investment? Imagine that you're trying to decide if this is worth doing. Now, this project will require a one-off upfront cash investment of $5,000 and will return cash over five years, as you can see here, starting with $600 in year one and finishing with $2,300 in year five. So as you can see, by investing $5,000, you estimate you will receive $7,500 in five years, leaving you with a total profit of $2,500. And the question is, is it worth taking on this project? Well, at first glance, it might look like the project is worth doing because you're making a 50% return. But this thinking has a big problem, namely the time value of money. Over time, money becomes less valuable for two reasons. The first is inflation and the second is opportunity cost. Let's take a quick look at each. So inflation erodes the purchasing power of money over time. In the 1980s, $1 million would typically have bought you a 4,000 square foot apartment in Manhattan. Today, that same $1 million will buy you just an 876 square foot apartment on average. So it's clear that a million was worth more 40 years ago than it is today, and it will be worth even less than it is today 40 years from now. Another reason you would prefer not to have the money 40 years from now, is that you're giving up the opportunity to do something with that money right now. Maybe you'd invest it or buy a place to live. Now, this phenomenon whereby time affects the value of money is called the time value of money. And it simply means that it's better to receive a sum of money now than an identical sum of money at a later date. So let's return to our example and the question of whether it's a worthwhile investment. With this new information about the time value of money, maybe the investment case doesn't look as strong as it did before. But how can we know for sure? This is where present value and net present value comes in. You can use net present value to discount future cash flows back to their current value. But what should you discount these future cash flows by? Well, the rate at which we discount future cash flows is called the discount rate. And the discount rate is really as simple as saying, to me, $10 today is worth just $9 next year, or to me, $10 today is worth just $7.50 next year. Choosing a discount rate is a critical part of NPV, but it's also a bit of a black art, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. Now, there's a couple of ways you can think about the discount rate. And the first is as an interest rate that you could easily achieve if you invested your money elsewhere. So for example, if you can earn a 5% yield on 10-year treasury bonds, you might set your discount rate to be 5%. Another way to think about the discount rate is as the minimum acceptable rate of return you're prepared to accept or as a hurdle rate. So for example, maybe you don't consider it worthwhile to take on any project that doesn't earn you at least a 10% return, in which case you'd set your discount rate to 10%. So for our example, let's set the discount rate to 10%. And now that we've done that, we're finally in a position to calculate the net present value. So first, let's take a look at the present value formula. And this is the formula that calculates the present value of a single cash flow that you receive in the future. Now, I'm going to say that again. It computes the value of just one single future cash flow. And the variables in this equation are C, which stands for a cash flow in the future, R is the discount rate, and T is the time interval defined in some unit of your choosing. So, for example, you could choose years, in which case zero is year zero, one becomes year one, two becomes year two, etc. So let's use this formula to calculate the net present value for our example. So on this image, you can see, here's the question we were asking, is this a good investment? Here we have our present value calculation. And what we've done below is calculate the net present value, which we've worked out to be 376. So let's break this 
down a little bit. So we're first going to think about how do we interpret this 376. Well, with NPV, if the result is above zero, then that means the investment is worth pursuing. Conversely, if the investment is less than zero, you're better off declining. Now, effectively, a value above zero tells us that our investment will clear our hurdle rate, which for our example was 10%. So let's take a look at the equation. So you can see for year zero, we calculated the present value by taking our negative $5,000 and then dividing it by one plus 0.1. So 0.1 represents our discount rate as a decimal. And then that's to the power of zero. So that gives us a result of negative 5,000. And then we add on the result for year one, which is effectively the same. We're just changing the cash flow and this power here. And then we just continue until we've run out of cash flows, add them all up, and that gives us this NPV score. Now, up until this point, the present value equation we've looked at shows how to calculate the present value of a single cash flow. And for our example, what we did is we used that equation multiple times to calculate our net present value. And the equation you can see here on the screen is just a mathematical representation of performing a present value calculation multiple times. So all this equation is saying is from time period zero until you run out of time periods, perform this calculation. Now note that this T here next to the R in the equation means that it's possible if you want to have different discount rates for each time period. Now, one way to slightly speed up the calculation of net present value is to use discount factors, and they're slightly different to discount rates. Now, a discount factor is a decimal value you multiply your future cash flow by to calculate its present value. And the formula for that you can see here. However, most people don't calculate the discount factor and that's because somebody else has already done it and published it in table format. And these published tables will look something like this. So all you have to do to find your discount factor is quickly scan the table to see what it should be. So for example, the discount factor for an 8% discount rate over five years is 0 0.6806. Now, one final thing to talk about before we wrap up, and that is that by far the quickest way to calculate net present value is to use a spreadsheet such as Excel or Google Sheets. Now to calculate net present value, you use the NPV function where you simply enter your discount rate followed by your cash flows. And then at the very end, add on your initial negative investment. And you can see that here. There are several advantages and disadvantages associated with net present value. In terms of advantages, then net present value is easy to calculate. It allows you to compare one investment to another to decide which is better. And finally, it takes into account the time value of money when appraising investments. Now, in terms of disadvantages, then you must select a discount rate and there's no real guidance on how to do this. NPV is not applicable in many situations, such as startups, where it isn't possible to estimate future cash flows. And finally, there's always the risk that your estimates for future cash flows are over optimistic and your project fails to return as much as you estimated. Now, some organizations use something called a margin of safety in their NPV calculations to compensate for this. And how that works is suppose an organization sets a margin of safety of 20%. Well, in that case, they would not authorize an investment unless the NPV value was not only above zero, but 20% or more above the initial outlay. This way they give themselves some wiggle room should their estimates not turn out to be as accurate as they hoped. So in summary, net present value is a tool that takes into account the time value of money to help you appraise if an investment or a project is worth undertaking. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.